Hello, in this video, we're going to go ahead and show you how to now take the Strike Trader Elite indicators that have been added to your MT4 platform through the installation. You should now see the indicators in your navigator window in the indicator section as the Strike Trader Elite Pulse and Strike Trader Elite Push indicators. So, we're going to build up a basic chart. We're going to build up a few time frames and show you how to set up basic charts to get ready to start trading and utilizing primarily the FX pulse indicator. That's the primary indicator. It's a hybrid momentum indicator. It's not MACD. It's not CCI. It's, it's none of that. It's an indicator that's compares, uh, comparing different uh, measurements of price movement and momentum and then plotting that for you in, in a way that you can see when momentum is building, uh, when mom momentum is decreasing in a market regardless of the time frame that you're trading. So let's go ahead, let's start with a Euro US dollar chart. We'll set it to a five minute chart. We'll go down to about the lowest time frame I would ever use. Just initially, let's look at some stuff on the MT4 platform. I notice a lot of MT4 traders have this particular row of tools and the time frame items set below, wasting uh, screen real estate on your MT4 platform. I would suggest you take those wherever they are and move them so that you have all four kind of areas of tools set up horizontally, taking up the minimum real estate possible on your screen. So it's kind of funny, I'll watch videos of somebody that's traded on the MT4 platform literally since back in the horse and buggy days, and they still have these two items down below uh, wasting screen real estate. You know, it's like, why not just move them and maximize the area you can put your charts? Let's first of all, let's explode this Euro US dollar chart. And we have it set to a five minute. I'm going to lock down this chart. So basically we hold it on the hard right edge. If I wanted to step it back from the hard right edge, I would click that button, click it again, goes back to the hard right edge. If I unclick the uh, scroll, basically lock button, I can go in and move it and the screen won't pull back. If I select that button and I scroll back and let go, it will keep reverting back to the hard right edge. So that's just a preference. Now you can use the plus and minus to zoom out and grow the size of your candlesticks and spread out the view. We'll cover that as we add the indicators. But since we have an exploded view right now on a M5 or five minute chart, let's go right click and go into properties. And here's some properties that I like. I have background set to uh, black, foreground white. I have my grid so I can barely see it. So I've gone into the grid. I've gone custom. I typed in the numbers 45, 45, 45, add to custom colors. Click on that custom color, hit OK. I've set my bar up, bar down, bull candle to aqua, my bear candle to black, so it looks like the back, you know, background of the screen, so they look hollow. And my line graph I set to aqua. That way all my wicks and all my candles are aqua. It's just a preference. You can go, you know, the typical lime for bar up and bull candle, and you could go red for a bear candle and line graph, totally up to you. Uh, that's just a, a preference. I'm sorry, bar down and bear candle, you could have set to red, totally up to you, just a preference. So everything else looks good. I do wanna show you the common section. Some traders do like to go scale fix, you hit okay. If you can see, you'll see a little white line here. I can left click, grab the screen, move it up and down. I can left click and hold and make adjustments. That gives you a little bit of additional flexibility with the chart. If I just want to turn that off, 
Then I go back to properties. I uncheck that, hit OK, and then MT4 will at least let me left click in the right axis, hold, and scroll up and down to expand the chart. It's just your preference. You can play around with that feature. Okay, I have everything aligned up here the way I like it. Not, you know, maximizing how much area I have to work with for my screen. And let's go ahead and I'm going to minimize the candlestick price for now. We'll kind of scrunch up price. And there we go. That's the maximum amount. You can see this area went shaded, so I can't. You can also left click in the lower date time group area. You can you can laterally move your mouse or cursor, uh, you know, with a touchpad on a laptop or a mouse while you're holding the left key down to compress or expand price. Just want to make sure you guys understand some of the basic features of how you set your charts up. I like to have the order window in the upper left. You right click. That's called one click trading. You click on it. Uh, let's click on depth of market. You can see that's your uh, like a dome, a depth of market, where you can set quantity. You can even set stop loss and target profit. So as you enter trades per the quantity you've set, it will go ahead and initiate the uh, execution of the order and then place a stop and target for you. Just want to make sure you know that you know most brokers have this available and it's a floating window. Most traders tend to keep it. You have to keep it inside this framework of your MT4 platform. So that's another feature I uh, wanted to make sure you're aware of. Of course, retail traders don't get access to volume. We get uptick, downtick information, so price movement information on a per tick basis. We don't get to see uh, bid ask volume like futures traders and other market stock traders and related get to see. But that's okay. We don't we don't have to have that volume information to trade the FX markets. We're trading price action and mainly momentum in our case. So let's go ahead and start with the FX pulse indicator. I will left click and hold and drag that over to the screen. The group is tradingstrategyguides.com, Strike Trader Elite Pulse. I go to common. I like to always check the allow DLL imports box. I'm going to hit inputs and let's explode this screen. We have a lot of capabilities in this indicator. We have a lot of uh, stuff, technical available items for you to access in the settings. We have a first and second period that controls the sensitivity of the indicator and how much, how sensitive our hybrid momentum indicator is to the momentum in the price movement. So it's a comparison. We're comparing two different items to plot that uh, lower region indicator. So let's just go ahead. Let's just hit OK just so we populate the indicator. So you can see it. Now we'll go ahead and expand out a bit. So here is the Strike Trader Elite Pulse Indicator. We're looking for pulses of momentum. We have an index threshold defined by horizontal lines. So we have to get X amount of momentum to the upside before we would trigger the potential of a signal just the same to the downside. Any action within these two horizontal gray lines, that's kind of the neutral or the zero zone. And that's when the market has a lack of directional momentum. Upside momentum is detected with our hybrid momentum indicator, downside momentum, and dissipating momentum. So after initial pulse of momentum to the downside, the market goes sideways, we're detecting that as dissipating momentum. And then many times, especially when we're on a short time frame that has a lot of whipsaw price action as the market reacts to uh, the day's trading activities, 
unscheduled news or scheduled news, you can see when we have pushes of momentum, then the indicator detects that. And as the momentum wanes or decreases, the indicator shows that uh, through divergence. So the good thing about the visual overall look of the indicator is you can use it to see the shifts from downside to upside momentum, upside to downside momentum, and we can see when the momentum is dissipating or increasing. Let me turn that off. Here's a big shift in momentum from downside price action. Price action starts to lift. We cross our zero zone. First time we plot some of the indicator above our neutral zone, we get a vertical line to plot. Green, you know, go long type indication or, or signal. As we get pulses of momentum or dissipation of that upside momentum, the indicator reflects that. And, you know, like a traditional, you know, like MACDs or CCIs or momentum indicators or OSMAs or all these other indicators, we can see when there's a dissipation in momentum. You know, price is going higher, indicator peaks are getting lower. So we at least built this indicator visually to be familiar, but it's actually looking at momentum very different than a lot of uh, typical uh, momentum indicators. That is the basic look. Now you have full trader adjustability to go in and change items. So let's right click, let's go into indicator list and let's double click on that, pull up our custom indicator inputs window. So if I wanna speed up the indicator, right now the default 33 over 77, that is a very good uh, setting to start out at. Experienced traders, may go into this indicator setting and speed the indicator up or slow it down depending on if they're going to lower time frames or higher time frames. Uh, the T3 period uh, is, is a overlay indicator. Uh, that's not a primary component of the system. So anyhow, let's go in here. Let's just show you an example. Right now we're set at 33 by 77. So if I double that 33 number, it would be 66. So you can see the ratio of our two periods that we're comparing with two various indicators and then plotting the difference between the two as the indicator plot. It's roughly a little over two to one ratio. So if you are going to change the settings, I suggest you keep the ratio two to one or slightly greater than two to one. For instance, let's say I went down to a 15, then I need to have this indicator, if I was two, two to one, I would have it set as a 30. 15 times two is 30, but I like it to be a little over. This indicator tends to like odd numbers, like I've noticed in a lot of indicators that I build. So let's go 15 and 35 or 37. That's a little over two to one. And let's hit okay. And you can see the indicator becomes much more sensitive. Not a setting that I personally would ever use to trade the market on a five minute time frame. But I just wanted to show you there is flexibility in the, uh, in the options here, the settings to adjust. Let's go back, let's, let's go up in size. So we were at 33 and 77. Let's go up, let's go, let's go 53. And let's go 101. So let's grow the size. Now you can see the indicator lags a bit more. It, it's seeing bigger structural moves. So not only do we have the ability to adjust the sensitivity of how our hybrid momentum indicator is detecting and measuring price movement and looking for and identifying pulses of momentum, we can also vary the zone. We can make the zone tighter so it's barely just 
slightly above and below the zero line, or we can expand it. So when you tighten the zone, you make the indicator more likely to trigger lots of signals, even when there's a lack of momentum. So that can be counterproductive. So let's go in and let's show you that setting. We call it the box lines level. That creates the box around the zero line. So if I was going to make this more sensitive, or I shouldn't say more sensitive, if, if I was going to make the neutral zone smaller, a, a smaller area around the zero line, let's go in here and put a one and watch what happens. See how the neutral zone actually compresses around the zero line? So this is a good indication. If I if I grow the numbers on the indicator settings, if I lag the indicator and make it less sensitive, it's probably a good idea to then squeeze together or narrow my zone. Okay, let's go in here in the indicator. Let's just adjust this zone again. Let's go to a 0 0.0002. So we'll expand that zone just a little bit, and now it's expanded. So what this does is a lot of times the way momentum indicators are built, if a, if a momentum indicator is built properly, you'll get a lot of what's called zero line area rejects. So let's say you have a market that's oscillating in an uptrend. What will happen on the initial push, you'll have a big pulse above the zero line, and then it will come back to the zero line on a pullback, reject the zero line, and price will lift and make another, another wave higher. It might do it one time uh, after initial pulse, or it might do two, three, or four pulses in a row or waves in a row. So a lot of times you'll see the indicator come back to the indicator uh, zero line area before it presses higher. Well, a lot of old or, or a lot of old school indicators. The indicator will spend a lot of time returning to the zero line. We've designed our indicator so when we are getting pullbacks and strong momentum, we stay away from the neutral zone, giving too many false signals. That is a component that's been built into the indicator. And you have to realize we're on a five minute chart. So price is more erratic on lower time frames. So if I go to a one minute chart, price is the most erratic, the most whipsaw, uh, the least amount of smoothness to the price action that you can see visually by a quick glance at the chart. The higher I go in time frames, price action will tend to be more structural. You'll see the bigger moves and you won't see the noise. So in our opinion, after developing this and we utilize it we utilize this indicator as one of our filters in a in a forex fund that I operate. You know, we utilize this on five minute charts or higher. We never utilize this on a one minute chart. You could use the indicator on one minute chart. You could lag the settings, slow them down for somebody that's experienced. So let's say you're trading quick pulses of momentum out of, let's say, a news release the tool is exceptionally strong for helping you find and target and be patient until you get benchmark levels of upside momentum to then get in and work trades. You can, you can use it for that. I didn't build the indicator for that. I built it to operate on five minute time frames and above, mainly on our default settings. So let's go back into the indicator and let's go set us back to default of 3377. 77. And I'm going to go back here in the box lines level and set this back to a 0 0.003. If you like different coloring for your chart, no problem. Everything in this tool has trader adjustable features. So right now we have the box lines level dim gray. You could color it aqua, you know, black. You could uh, color it transparent so you don't even see it. You know, it's totally up to you. And then the width of the line 
if you want it if you want this line to be more bold you can go to a three or a four or if you want to hardly see it you could go to a one that is the basics of the initial settings I suggest you leave the maximum bars back around a thousand that means the indicator is looking at the current bar and then 999 bars back you can go higher that's fine it won't hurt the indicator but you will potentially use more MT4 resources if you're running you know 24 30 36 charts you know some traders are looking at a lot of markets that's fine okay now let's get into the pulse lines whether we're getting set up to go long or short you can turn those on or off the, through the uh, true false feature so I will leave them to true we want to see them they are set as a dotted line with a minimum one thickness so it's not overbearing on your chart visually you can fatten up the line make it a solid line all trader adjustable we have the pulse up a green color and the pulse down a red color so you can adjust colors so right now we have everything back to the normal settings default settings pulse up line pulse down line you can turn the line on and off again what we're, what we're doing with this system is we're looking for momentum and when we see momentum shifting from downside to upside momentum we're then getting ready to target trades.